Good evening, race fans. Welcome into the penultimate race of the season, round 14 of 15, the cutoff for our round of eight here at the Dover International Speedway. As always, here with my co-commentator, Art. How are we doing tonight? Oh, we're at the Monster Mile to decide the final four for the playoffs. It is going to be an exciting night. It's an absolutely treacherous cutoff race. Miles the Monster are going to be snatching souls here this evening. Very tight technical racetrack, and it's going to definitely put the four best into the championship race next week at Las Vegas. 125 laps here this evening, estimated fuel run at 56 to 58 laps. Five tire sets total, one on to start with, and four in the pits, and three green-white checkers to settle it if need be. Let's go ahead and get you into the on-track action as qualifying is already underway. One of our playoff contenders, Joshua McQuiggan. He comes around. Oh, loose out of four. This is not how he would have wanted to start this. Samuel Demien currently top of the board. Now is Casey Brown goes to the top. A tenth quicker than his teammate. Speed Zone Esports currently one and two after their first lap. Ricardo Bernal, nice lap. Samuel Ooh, James goes even Miller's on, quicker. Yeah. Only able to go up to P2. He was the fastest in practice. Not the fastest here in qualifying, though. Great lap for the 60 machine. See what Jacob Blakely is up to in the double zero machine. He heads off into turn number three. Halfway through qualifying, and it is still Samuel Damien at the top of the board. Jacob Blakely goes P12 on his first lap. Randy Arms in a must-win situation tonight out of turn number four. See what he can do. He'll cross the line, and he'll go top of the board. Exactly what the 25 machine needed to do. McQuiggan will go fifth quickest on his one and only lap. Jacob Blakely crosses the line. And he'll stay 13th quickest. Next one out of the pits, Andrew Tenold, who's going to have to give it another go. Thomas Green, your championship leader, heads out in the 13 machine. Let's go on board with him. Let's see what it takes to be quick around this one mile D shaped concrete oval on his out lap. Staying high to build the momentum as he sets off on his first lap. Crosses the line. We'll wrap the bottom through one and two. Let it rise up just a little bit. Late apex into turn number two. Rises up to that backstretch wall, which seemingly just extends a little bit further on the exit of turn number two. Same thing on the three and four side of the speedway. Rises a little bit. Natural progression through the corner. On his first lap, the 13 of Thomas Green will go all the way to P2. A hundred of a second behind Randy Arms, and most guys have improved on their second lap, so this could be a heck of a lap. A little loose out of two, though. Three and four for the final time. Just over a minute remaining. Can Thomas Green snatch pull away from the 25 of Randy Arms? Yes, he can. 
minimal improvement on lap number two, but that's what he needed. I'm watching my, you know, championship pick, my underdog, Jonathan Dolly, make his lap. And it was a little spicy through three and four, <laughs> and he's going to settle into 15th. His teammate, Andrew Tennell, off of turn number four. Go P11. Justin Johnson just crossed the line. He will go P4. Very nice lap. Next across the line will be Nick Miller. In the 20 machine. The only other man out on the racetrack is Jordan Kernow. In the 46. Don't know if Nick Miller will actually have time to, to set a lap. We'll see. It'll be pretty close, but he might come up just a few seconds short. Definitely don't want to be starting this far back. You want to get a qualifying time in. Don't want to have to drive through the pack. Okay, qualifying well, is gonna... over. Yeah, Ooh. he'll come up just a little bit short. He'll start 18th. The Thomas Creed, your pulse hitter. Here tonight for the Four Mile Productions. 125. Everyone begins to grid up. The top of your screen, the purple names are your playoff contenders. Samuel Dominion in the 60, trying to play spoiler, as is Brandon Bowers. Well, let's bring you... The playoff bubble as it stands, entering tonight. Drew Jua and Nick Miller have already advanced, so not really that important that Nick Miller did not qualify. Thomas Green, plus 17, he's got the best seat in the house. And then Justin Johnson, P4, he's looking pretty good. Magnus Anderson on the outside looking in. He'll start P13 here this evening. And then Randy Arms, P2. And then Jonathan Dolly, must win situation. He'll have work to do from 17th. I think in this situation, if Jonathan Dolly can't get a win, he's going to need every other playoff driver to wreck. Absolutely. It's basically a must win situation. It is our two months, Philly. Very nice. A massive shout out, though, to Tenold Galvin Racing and Four Mile Productions for coming on board and supporting this second to last race of the inaugural season. We know that the TGR guys have a great relationship with Four Mile Productions and uh, glad to see that carry over to the ARS side of things as well. 125 laps at a very technical racetrack to settle it. To get our championship for Art, you got any picks to win tonight? I mean, I, I really want to pick my championship pick, but I just don't think I can see it happening here at Dover. I don't want to jinx Randy again. He told us not to, but I feel like I kind of have to. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, pick, I want to. I'm gonna pick Mr. P3, Sam Demian. I'm gonna pick his teammate. Playing playoff spoiler. I like it. You're, you're, all right, Randy Arms is going to break this commentator's curse. He's going to make us look good tonight. Oh, no. Randy Arms from P2. If it, if you jinx it, you, you better gonna, tell him it was you. I will. Uh, he, he's going to know it's me. Oh. Have we lost Thomas? No. Thomas Green. All right. That could be something to watch out the rest of the race. But uh, Randy Arms is going to break the curse here tonight. All the That's bad Corbin's luck. Pit. He's going to... Get rid of the bad luck from the last two weeks, and he's going to race his way into the Final Four in Las Vegas. Lights are out on top of the pace car, though. 125 laps to settle it. As this field of what I believe will end up being 27, maybe 28 cars. Just as the starters stand off of turn number four. Thomas Green enters the Geico restart zone, and we are green. McQuiggan not getting a great start on that outside line. I believe that's Justin L. Johnson going for second place on the inside. Absolutely it is, trying to be aggressive early. He already picked up a spot on Samuel Demien. Further back, Ricardo Bernal, he's up two spots. In the eight machine, as is Devin Galvin. And Jonathan Dolly up one spot as well. Thomas Green will lead comfortably after lap number one, already out to a two and a half car length advantage. 
Further back, Samuel Dungan continues to drop spots. Brandon Bowers and his... Ooh, someone into the wall! We're getting turned! Devin Galvin into the wall! Caution is out! Ryan Hatch in the 95 of Devin Galvin. We were just talking about him. Early caution. Miles the Monster has already claimed two drivers, it looks like. Brandon French, I think he just slowed down to avoid it, but let's take a look at what happened here with the 54 machine. He's got some left rear spoiler damage. He, oh, he just gets very loose. Jacob Blakely, not enough time to check up. Devin Galvin, nowhere to go. Pender, who started from pit lane, will actually be the, the beneficiary of that. But very unlucky for the 95 of Devin Galvin. We'll see if that... Uh... Let's go on board here with the cockpit. He actually might have escaped a broken tow link somehow, but let's go back on board with him. The 95, absolutely wrong place, wrong time. Jacob Blakely, who will end up getting into the back of the 54. Just snaps loose in front of him and quick enough on the checkup. But it looks like the 95 will actually stay out on the racetrack, so I guess his car is okay. And then Ryan Hatch will uh, be on pit road for four fresh tires and uh, a lot of damage repair there. We heard numerous times from drivers pre-race that this car was deadly loose and then over the course of a run, it didn't get any better. The heat and the tires didn't make it handle any better. It's just loose out there tonight. And we saw it right off the bat with the 54 Ryan Hatch. There, there's no way Devin stays out with all the damage on the front of that car. I thought the right front would have been destroyed, to be honest with you, but a 95 machine looks to be... I mean, I... I get it, you're running top 20 right now, but you still got 120 laps to go. Yeah, like, I feel like there's no, especially since the tow link's not broken, you actually do have the durability of the next-gen car, so you might as well come in and make sure you get as much damage fixed as possible, but maybe he's nah. just taking that durability into account, thinking it won't be that bad. Lights are out on the pace guard. He's lining up, I believe, 15th. So that's going to be a car to watch. See if the aerodynamics come into play, and he's the next one to snap loose, but that'll be something to keep an eye on mid-pack. At the front, we saw Justin Johnson, very aggressive on the initial start of the race. Let's see what he can do here. Thomas Green will choose the outside this time. He starts here at Dover, so important. The leader usually has a big advantage due to the, the low pace speed. He can get that big jump down into turn number one. Keep an eye on that here and see if Thomas Green can take advantage of that. As we enter the Geico restart zone for our second restart of the day, and he is away. I'm looking for this 33 to make the move, and that's what he does, absolutely. He's been aggressive on both starts. Three wide at Dover. Who's going to get the runoff of turn number two, or do they all fence it? 33 not having great connection there. He's going to slide up in front of Bowers. Bowers going to go a little low on Helm. Does not have the drive through three and four. So Justin Johnson in the 33 Ooh, back into loose. the third position. That'll allow Brandon to come right back at him. Down into turn number one. We're seeing early on these cars being a handful. As Randy Ars Randy Arms oh, we got tries a car to going around in the back. Scarebo or yeah, it's Scarebo is around. Yellow is out again at 59 of Tony Scarbo. Not what his teammate Randy Arms wanted to see there. He was challenging for the race lead. Caution back out again here early at Dover. Scarbo just looked loose as all get out out of two. Not right a lot in front of damage. Of... <laughs> is this Jacob Blakely again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, boy. Not Blakely's fault. He just, he's followed him. And 
All right, Scarabo yeah. just gets loose. Uh, not a lot of damage there to the 59. He'll be okay. Jacob Blakely appears to be the magnet here. Let's go on board here with the double zero again and see what this view looks like. Yeah, initially, it looks like he's just moving up the racetrack, but then he slides down in front of him. And uh, he'll eventually just send him around. It definitely looks like the 95 has a little bit of a, a, a pull to the right there on the steering wheel, though, so now he's coming down this caution to, to fix the damage, I imagine. Ryan Hatch actually uh, is going to get it all fixed. We expect Scarebo in. Jacob Blakely going to just say, you know what, I've been through the front. I had two cars spin right in front of me, but uh, I'm all good. Staying out on the racetrack. Don Dolly up to P12 of five positions in the Four Mile Productions car. Emotes make everything better, don't they? They really do. But yeah, this is this is probably going to be a long one. We definitely heard from everybody pre-race that it was loose. Let's go. Uh, let's go get a word with Jacob Blakely, uh, Double Zero Machine. Just gonna oh. deal with it. Jacob, you got a copy? Yes, I do. Uh, so first of all, it looks like you have now a a team. Uh, that you've found this season, right at the end of things. But uh, also, you appear to have a giant magnet stuck to the front of that car. Yeah, I, I don't even know what's going on. It's just two bad brakes. I feel so bad for Hatch and that one. And then, I, I don't know if, if I was faster, but I was trying to stay off his bumper. I don't even know who it was still. It was uh, the Tony Scurbo in the 59. Yeah, I, I tried to stay off his back bumper. I don't know if I neck coded him. It looked like it, because I, I didn't touch him until after I hit him when he was in front of me, spinning. So, but I uh, heard, from, heard from pre-race from several drivers that it's been pretty loose out there, and uh, the first two cautions seem to confirm that. What are you guys feeling in the car? It's it's ice, <laughs> especially <laughs> off of two and four. Well, yeah. with my damage, I'm no longer loose, so maybe that's a good thing. Patch, he was helping you out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we're getting back to green. Good luck. God bless. Keep a, keep a handle on that thing. Try Quote there is that the car is on ice. Out of the turns. We've seen ample evidence of that thus far. Getting back to green flag racing here on lap number 11. Thomas Green, Randy Arm, Samuel Demian, and Brandon Bowers, your top four. We are see away again. Of, see what kind of shuffling we'll see here in the top five. No, <laughs> probably won't be much change up, you know, on the lead, but. I was just looking for the move that Justin Johnson likes to make on those restarts. He's been getting pretty good jumps, but side by side for third. Behind them, Fillers and Justin Johnson. Someone way up out of there. Oh, that's There's... Jacob Blakely. He toes. No, oh, he's blinking. Huge damage to the double zero. Let's take a look at what happened. As uh, this was off the restart. And he blinked out horribly. And we were just unaware of where he is at. He's still not on the racetrack. He just ends up destroyed. Oh, Brandon Bowers is losing on the front stretch. And he'll keep it straight. We have no idea what happened to Jacob Blakely there. He was gone and then he came back and the whole car was destroyed. His day is done. Oh my goodness. I mean, that, that right rear was destroyed. But we're starting to settle into a, somewhat of a, of a run here. Single file. All the way back to 13th. Here's Andrew Tennell to Nick Miller. Miller through on the inside. Ricardo Bernal trying to... <laughs> Ricardo Bernal trying to put James Jimmy Fillers under pressure. Three and four, almost Low contact, contact shipped him up the racetrack. That turf. I have to have a conversation with Ricardo about actually putting a number on his car. It's on the quarter panel, and he should be 
taken out back and things done to him. Uh, oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. Between him and I don't fillers. know. Not like each other too bad, but this is great stuff if they can hold on to it. It's really tight at a turn number four. This is the battle for sixth. And there's a driver right behind him who's <laughs> not going to be want to like caught up in this Magnus sitting right behind him. Yeah, Jonathan Dolly as well, who's up eight spots. He's definitely got the speed once this thing starts to spread out a little bit. Look like Ricardo made contact with the wall there. This thing proving to be a handful for these drivers. Dolly's up eight spots. Logan Brass, he's up 11. Brandon Bowers trying to recover after getting loose down the front straightaway. Joshua McQuiggan. Looks like something happened there with Justin L. Johnson. He conceded that position to McQuiggan. Seemed like he was very slow. Brandon, Brandon French in the pits. The six machine, right side tires going on for him. That would be unscheduled very early into the fuel run. But Thomas Green has a second lead over Randy Arms. He has seven tenths over his teammate Samuel Demien. Into the battle here at the 89 and the 11. Bowers trying to get the run off the high side. Getting the draft from the 54, Ryan Hatch, who puts it in the fence. Guys looking to the inside, trying to go two for one almost. A lot of single file here. It's going to be about how well you manage your tires. Andrew Tennell trying to make a move on the 97. And to make that move, he might have moved him just a little bit. Contact made. The outside wall for Casey Brown, but Tennell's up into the 12th position. Dolly losing his spot to Nick Miller. He made contact with the apron through three and four the last time by. He's fine back around on the outside. And Nick Miller was out of position, to be fair. He did not get his qualifying lap in, although he wanted to, but Dolly fighting back on the high side. Not making it easy on him. <clears throat> Burning up his tires, though. Miller will complete the pass, and Dolly will settle into the 10th position. So we work lap number 21. Nick Miller, the biggest mover now, up nine spots. French still on pit road in the six machine, but doesn't Got some left front damage, but doesn't seem to be too bad. Just behind them, Larry McKenzie Jr., William Bowman going at it. Thank you, Dean Clevy. Bowman will take the run off of the high side, trying to bring his teammate Chris Pinder into the mix. This is just inside and outside of the top 20. 32 gives up those spots. Tony Scarbo goes by as well. Like the 32 is just trying to keep a handle on things and not be in anybody's way. Zach Scarroll shoot around the outside. Kevin Boley. And here comes Devin Galvin as well. Oh, that's going to be contact for somebody. That's Logan Brass, who ate the inside wall. Left front toe link is destroyed. He's that's still moving, though. This is just a single car incident, very loose. Back end comes around on him. You see Hatch gets loose in front of him. And he will make it to pit road. And we stay green. As Randy is taking a tenth out of Thomas Green's lead over the last couple of laps. And uh, the handling on ice is definitely proven to be true here yet again. Brandon French is now leaving the pits. He's going to try and get around Logan Brass at least. Nick Miller making a move on Magnus Anderson. Through the low side in three and four. He will be clear by the time they get to the front stretch. We'll see if Magnus tries to cross over, not able to do so. I think Ricardo might have burned his stuff up trying to fight with <laughs> fillers. Because now here comes Nick Miller on him. And Nick Miller's doing a nice job of getting through these cars quickly, though, saving his tires as well. So he could be in contention here uh, if we get another caution here and he gets caught back up to the field. Ricardo a little loose there out of turn number four. Nick Miller will take the seventh spot away. And he'll set off after James Jimmy Fillers, who's uh, 1.7 seconds ahead. Oh, Ricardo very Ooh. loose. Magnus has to escape down to his inside, had to back out of that move. Ricardo very loose. 
as is everybody else. William Bowman trying to make a move further back on Ryan Hatch. Chris Pinder hang on to it. He'll just barely scrape the outside wall. His teammate will go by. Devin Galvin will go by. He admitted to us pre-race as well. Didn't put in all the practice time that he needed. And Randy Arms is closing in on Thomas Green here. We were at lap 29. Battle for the race lead heating up here. Two tenths quicker last lap. As they approach lap traffic too. And uh, definitely with the way we've been seeing stuff. Jonathan Dolly loose down to the inside. Smoke off of turn number two. He'll get it gathered up. Thomas Green has blinked out. Maybe some cause for concern there for the 25 machine. As they are approaching, I believe that is Logan Brass that has come out of the pits. Brandon French as well, forcing them to go a lane up. But he was very respectful, very predictable, held the bottom. Battle here as well for the 18th position, but... Looks like Thomas Green was able to handle that lap traffic a little bit better. Has my co-commentator left? No. Fair enough. The battle's starting to form all over this racetrack. Got very quiet there for a minute. Freaking out. Something that happened. But look at this battle here, though. Led by McQuiggan. That's third all the way back to seventh. And everyone's trying to make moves. McQuiggan way up top. Here comes Nick Miller on the charge. And this is five cars under a blanket. They were almost going three wide there. And I was talking to Corbin. He says he hears a popping sound. But Nick Miller three passes that lap. He is a 14 position. He's only four seconds off the lead. He might not even need a caution. Might catch everybody naturally. He's three tenths out of a podium position. Especially if the leaders get to fighting. And then further back here, look, we got a bunch Ooh. of battles. McQueen about on. to get turned on the nose of Demian. Caution's out. And that was not McQueen. Oh, that was Ryan Hatch in the 54. He's at the top of, I believe that is turn number three. Ooh, what in the world is this? Hillman Kevin Bowley. That was turn three and four. That's the second incident he's been in. Out of our three cautions tonight. Ooh, and this looks like it kind of transpires. Oh, and Bowley was loose, tried to catch it, run up the hill. Hatch came down ever so slightly. Oh, that's just violent. Yeah. And then, oh man, that was just a continuing wreck there, I feel like, because we'll go on board here with, with Kevin. Um, that was not intentional from him, I don't imagine, at least with the way we've seen him race this year. Uh, this car is just a handful for these guys. He gets a better run through one and two, but he gets very loose on the bottom. And he's going to catch it up the racetrack, and then Hatch comes down ever so slightly into him. And then, yeah, you can just tell that transition. You can hear the, the revs, the transition onto the track. It just sent him around, and at that point, everyone's along for the ride. That was incredibly violent. For Dover, that was a heck of a hit. Thomas Green will have the benefit of pit stall number one. It's all up to the crews. Nick Miller's going to get caught up here with that caution that he needed. He'll be right in the hunt for the lead now. Left side's going on for everybody. Thomas going to win the race off of pit road. Randy Arms second. Justin Johnson, Quiggin, Fillers, Demian, Magnus Anderson, Ryan Tiller, Brandon Bowers, and then a whole host of others. Brandon French, I believe, is our Wait, lucky what dog. what happened to Nick Miller on this stop? He was 25 seconds on pit lane, so damage... Uh... Oh, wow. <clears throat> Gonna have to do it all over again? Mm-hmm. We've been informed that there was a Zack Scare wreck of avoidance. So let's see here. Uh... Let's go on board with Zack Scare. We can find him. 
Zack is usually caught up in most of our wrecks through no fault of his own, though. But you can see he's loose out of turn number two. <laughs> That's one way to avoid the wreck. <laughs> I thought it was McElroy. I thought you were hyping him up. It was disrespectful. <laughs> That's what friends are for. Uh. But lap 39, I believe, is when we'll get the restart. What's up, Ryan? Why is that pinned in shit? Ryan, a goaded mod, to be honest. <laughs> Let's take a quick look here while we're getting ready to get back to green flag racing here let's take a look at the playoff bubble in our side-by-side -side view drew Jouat, nick miller advancing thomas green doing exactly what he needs to do and then justin johnson in there as well i mean randy also trying to do what he needs to do absolutely randy arms in a must win though that might be your headset are you your mic at all i, think I, I do yeah that's what why that would is. it pop for you i don't know but that's i figured out what it is um, it's not that big a deal. It's fine. Um, so right, as it stands right now, the top four provisionally as they enter tonight would be the top four that advanced. So that's how they run now. Obviously, if Randy Arms can get up in there and get above Thomas Green, that would greatly shake things up. It would put Randy Arms third and Thomas Green would have the last spot. But there's a whole lot of math to work out and there's a long way to go, not even halfway. Anything can and will happen in the playoff cut race. All we need is these front four to just take each other out. <laughs> Jonathan Dolly going to get himself a playoff spot before the end of this thing. We're coming back to the restart, though. Lap 39. Thomas is going to lead us to the Geico restart zone. Let's crank it up for the first time tonight as they get back to Greed. doing a nice job keeping their cars under control on the restart looks like we have a three-way batter for the lead here as mcquiggan has joined the fight randy arms not letting thomas green get away on the restart that'll be important as it seems that he's got some decent long run speed i'm really surprised we didn't jinx them with the uh you know crank it up there absolutely got a driver update for ryan hatch in the 54 <laughs> He runs 22nd, down eight spots from where he started, though he's been involved in two out of our three cautions tonight, neither of which were really his fault. Got heavy left side damage, but he's still on the lead lap, battling away. These are three cars following each other's tire tracks. Justin Johnson. Runs P4, a little bit further behind, but he can definitely see everything right out his front windshield. Only seven tenths off the lead, and then Justin, or behind him, is Samuel Demi, and he's fifth. One second back from the race lead. A lot of single file throughout this field. Looks like William Bowman trying to make a move on his teammate. Binder will let him go with a limited seat time. Zach Scare rounds out the top 20. Andrew 
Tenel trying to take the 13th spot away while defending from his teammate. Pinder making a pass for 18th. He got back by his teammate. Moments after he let him through, so maybe a, a bobble there for the 23. There's a whole pack of cars. I mean, it's realistically 13th to, to 20th, all running this single file line. Battle for the lead, though. Battle for second as well. Continuing to heat up. Intent separating each of them from each other. McQuiggan practically pushing Randy Arms through these corners. A great shot there. It's going to be all about tire management in this phase now, especially we've heard from McQuiggan pre-race. Uh, the dirty air is pretty bad, so you got to think slight advantage to Thomas Green if it continued to run like this. Justin Johnson, though, he's sweating this result because if there's a change in the top two, it means he's out. So he's hoping the 25 will stay right where he's at. I am impressed that the 25 and the 29 have been able to hold serve for so long directly behind each other, behind Thomas Green. I haven't seen any effects of the dirty air quite yet. They're doing a nice job. Let's go on board here with the 25. Ooh. Just as you said that, Randy, he took a line there. I think he got loose out of two. Thought he was looking to make a move, but... Ooh. There's a car wrecking the 46 of Jordan Kerr now? He'll get it gathered nope. back up, though. I guess we do have a caution. I don't know if it was for them or what. I would say that's a safe bet. Oh, because in, in the back right, match involved in another one. There was, like, simultaneous incidents here. Jonathan Dolly goes through a little half spin here for the 46. I think Andrew... What? Tennell gets into him here. This is, we'll take a look at this and then go look at what happened at, oh, Tennell just, oh, man. Sending there really deep. My goodness, Kyger, I actually do want to see this though while we're on it. Had to crank the wheel hard right in the middle of the corner. Yeah, but Tennell just sends it in and the hole closed and oh, they're trying to avoid it. So yeah, that was multiple car incident there. Uh, well, then you go look back at Hatch and Devin Galvin, the 95. And Larry McKenzie Jr. Ooh, he does that's, oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow there. But at this point, ca uh, caution is not out, you see there. Still not out. So, I mean, he's obligated to continue racing. And I don't... Uh, he th I mean, at this point, he's he's right in thinking that Hatch is going to go down the racetrack. It's it's a kind of it's tougher when you go. Like, to the there's onboard. there's nothing he can do about it, really. I mean, like, he probably should have slowed down more, but the caution wasn't out, so he's kind of like. I mean, he does a try to slow down, but that's unfortunate. Like, he, he he didn't do anything wrong. It's not, just not the circumstances not inherently, are yeah, kind of kind of funny. You run out of room very quick here at Dover. So Magnus, ooh, actually, that's Randy Arms going to roll the dice on strategy. He'll be the first one out on four fresh tires. The top 11 all stayed out on the racetrack. This is what I like to see. He'll be flying through the field with the fall off. McQuiggan, and I quote, said, Car handles bad, it's loose. Dirty air bad, fall off bad. Race going to be bad. Um, I think it's been pretty entertaining so far, but to each his own. <laughs> but I do believe officially Logan Brass and the 27 of Jacob Blakely are out of the race. I'm curious as to how Rainey is going to do this, because obviously he's going to have to have one more stop. He's probably going to try and take it as late as possible. But with these guys <clears throat> basically splitting this here in half, he will have the freshest tires at the end. It's all going to depend on how the cautions fly. It really is. True. That's I don't all know why I'm talking strategy whenever. 
not even halfway, but it's it really, I mean, if it goes green, I could definitely see it working out for him if he gets some quick cautions and just... What would suck for him is if by some facet it goes 20 laps and he hasn't made his way up to the front yet, then he has to come in and take another set, and Thomas Green does as well. That would suck, but I imagine he'll make pretty quick work as long as he can uh, keep the car under control. If you're Thomas Green, you don't want to roll over for Randy Arms. He's been a threat all season long. If he just had a, a little bit better luck the last two weekends, he probably would be in on points. Uh, but that's not how it works sometimes. So he is. Uh, he definitely doesn't... You, you want, you know... Who do you think is quicker? Justin Johnson, Randy Arms, Dolly? Like, you want to... As a competitor, you obviously want to win. But if you can make it a little bit easier for yourself, uh, then you, you'll do everything you can to do that. So if Nick Miller is, is closing in on him late, he might roll over a little bit because it doesn't matter. He's already in. But if Randy's behind him late, I don't expect him to make it easy. But this is the track position that Nick Miller has wanted. Justin Johnson starting on the front row. He's had some pretty good restarts. We'll see if anyone can actually hang with Thomas Green um, down into turn number one. Uh, Thomas Green has had, like, I'm not going to say the best idea because obviously leading the race is always going to be the best idea, but not being caught up in traffic is the best thing anyone can do. Yeah, he's, he's had the cautions come out right before traffic the last two times. So pace car is off. He chooses the bottom for this restart. When Randy's in second, he's been choosing the top. So curious to see how this plays out. Enters the Geico restart zone, and we are back underway. Justin definitely had a good start there. Just barely not able to hang on that right rear as they enter turn number one. Randy already made up one spot. Looking to make it two here. Just w watch his progress through the field. This is where all the new tire runners are going to come through. And yeah. well, Justin has... Johnson challenging for the lead. Do we have a lead oh, chance for the lift. first? Oh, he got tied out of four. He was there. He just couldn't make it stick. He's going to give the spot up to Fillers. Fillers can do now. And this is all Ooh, a Fillers gaggle loose. of cars. Second through fifth. Here comes Ricardo Bernal. Trying to make it two and one. Ooh. What a send. He what door, a though. send. Can he make it stick? No, he's in the wall. Oh, he really went for it, though. <laughs> oh, he yeah. absolutely went for it. Randy is caught up in the bottleneck. This is basically what he, the exact opposite of what he needed to have happen. Up to make some bold moves here. He will get around Casey Brown, his teammate, and he'll have to pick off Jonathan Dolly, who's also in a must-win situation. Side by side ahead of this. Ricardo Bernal. It's around Justin Johnson and Dolly a little aggressive there, showing the inside. He's got a teammate ahead of that. Does Randy Arms? Oh, Dolly's being very aggressive on older tires. Not sure it's worth it before halfway. Could lose more positions as a result. Oh, Casey Brown, hang Casey on to it! He backed it down. And we will stay green somehow. Randy is through Dolly. He's got a teammate ahead of him. He's probably giving him a polite message on the radio. Uh, get out of the way. <laughs> if this oh, continues to go green, though, it'll actually end up working out regardless of the traffic. Taylor moves to the inside. He's trying to let him get the run off the high side. Can he make it two for one? It's going to get tied off the corner. He'll have the move done. Two for one. And this is an absolute madhouse. Ooh. I think Dolly sent Tiller up the track there. Oh, and he's loose. Three wide. And it's off and it's back to two wide. Tiller up the racetrack. Randy Arms now only has to pass one car at a time. Oh, Dolly in the wall! Oh, and it's the huge one for... Oh, their whole second half of the field going to pile in here. Tony Scammer nowhere to go. Yellow. And you knew they weren't going to make it work. You really... There was no shot they pulled that off with how aggressive they were being. 
they were going absolutely nuts. Demian, ooh, that's just, that's a bad battle of inches here. Demian's trying to move to the high side. He has the run on the 74. He just gets into the right rear turns and Tiger, Pinder involved, Scarebo. We got Nick Miller, Ricardo Bernal, Justin L. Johnson, Ryan Tiller all coming in. Thomas Green, James Filler staying out. So this will be very interesting now. Randy is going to start third on the fresh tires, so this actually is okay. He'll get around these two relatively quick. He's got Bowers, McQuiggan, Magnus Anderson, and William Bowman behind him on the same strategy. But then he'll have 10 lap older tires to Justin Johnson, Ryan Tiller, Scarebo, and everybody else. So the strategies are being split up here. But Randy's shown he's got that long run speed, so whenever it comes down to it, once they get through traffic, if they haven't used their stuff up, they have a shot at Randy, but if they have used it up, I think Randy's going to have a good shot to stay in front of him. It'll be Ricardo Bernal starting eight, so he's got a couple guys to work through, but we know Nick Miller's been pretty quick, so they'll be battling each other. Justin Johnson will be as well. So it's going to be all topsy-turvy here as they try and fight. It, best case scenario for Randy and, and McQuiggan, Bowers, Magnus Anderson, William Bowman, is this goes about another 20 laps or so, and they somehow hold their track position, and they get around Thomas Green and Fillers, and the caution comes out. That would reset everybody, and then they would be restarting at the front caution comes out in 10 laps or so they probably pit along with thomas green and fillers and then they restart behind everyone on lap 61 so again it's just going to be really down to when these cautions fly and uh, it's going to be impossible to predict um, if they go aggressive as they did last restart it'll be about 10 laps so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see Nick Miller with a request in game chat. Can y'all stop wrecking so we can go green? If they can keep up that level of intensity without overstepping the line, we could be in for an all-timer, but uh, it's pretty easy to overstep that line at Dover. Especially when these cars cost no one actual money. <laughs> Although... Although you do cost people money, there are prizes on the line here. Absolutely. But the actual race cars themselves don't cost anything, so... For a lot of people, there might not be a line. Absolutely. Monday League, never. While we wait to go back green, would love to give another quick shout out as we have all season to our wonderful partners here in the Affinity Racing Series, adminbox.com. Use code ARS-BOX at checkout for 10% off. That's B-O-X-X. -X. Make some awesome products useful for anything iRacing related, race control, button box, the whole, the whole nine yards there. And then also uh, as we race for a cause this season, at the Affinity Racing Series, racing for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Come up on the final couple of weeks of the season here. I would love to potentially meet our goal or just get closer to it to impact uh, and change lives for some uh, very worthy kids. I mean, if someone just happens to have $645 just laying around, that would be fantastic. Indeed it would. Coming to the restart here. Thomas Green and James Jimmy Fillers. Randy Arms did not actually get the best start. He'll lose out to Brandon Bowers on the same tire strategy. That's not what he needed. But he'll clear Fillers on the old tires and then try and track down Bowers again. 
Ricardo Bernal already up two spots. Nick Miller mired in traffic. This is what they want back here. McQuiggan trying to make the move on fillers now. Maybe almost three wide. Justin L. Johnson was on the high side there for a second. A lot of two by two mid pack. Bowers now trying to close the gap. Four car links and closing. 15 lap fresher tires. On board here. Ooh, almost contact between Hatch and Dolly. And he was a tenth quicker last lap, and Randy Arms with a was one one hundredth quicker. As Randy's closing up to the back of Bowers here. Thomas Green continuing to try and hold on with his internet. Thomas Green would love to see second and third battle each other, and it might not be much of a battle. Randy Arms, oh, he was there for half a second, gave him a, a quick look. This could if bring McQuiggan into play. If you're coming down to the end of the race and you're Randy Arms, are you trying to negotiate with Brandon Bowers? <laughs> I mean, you need a win to get in, and Bowers is just running for fun at this point. I don't know what you could offer him. Uh, it's obviously, you know, he's out here just to win the race. That's you know, yeah. His fun is winning the race, so don't expect him to, to roll over at all. But I get the point. Oh, and Ooh. just as we say that, Bowers actually probably realizing the situation will get out of the way all on his own so that's a massive respect there to the 11. i would not have done the same <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying i i'd I throw him a couple bucks i'm like hey bud i need this right because if if i'm in that position if i work all race and the guy beating me is the guy who should be in the championship four by now he should lock he should have locked himself in he was not playoff eligible because he keep, kept dropping from races I'm, I'm throwing him a couple bucks to try and put myself in the race. We do not have our first official lead change yet. Thomas Green had it by half a car length off turn number four. Randy Arms going to have to work for it, though. Use his stuff a little bit. While also being respectful of Thomas Green. Don't want to make any enemies as they enter the championship four. But now we have a change for lead, and Bowers will come right with him. New leader officially at the line. Randy Arms, he's in. Thomas Green is in. Drew Jawan and Nick Miller are in. Justin Johnson is out. Ricardo Bernal, three tenths behind the group of guys on new tires. So we'll see how much inroads he's able to make. Fillers is hanging on to six somehow with his old tires. Nick Miller's still in eighth. Tiller, ninth. Zach Scare, tenth. So they're not making the inroads that I thought they would. And the longer this goes for the lap 50 pitters, the better it will be. Randy Arms now has the clean air. He's got the good long run speed. Let's see what he can do with it. Magnus almost actively blocking Nick Miller. Got a driver update for Magnus. He runs sixth. He's up seven spots from where he started in the seven machine under pressure from Nick Miller. Ooh, Thomas Green having to concede. Looks like that car is starting to give up on him. He's got the lap. He's got the oldest tires on the field as well as fillers. Lap 35, the last time they came down for a pit stop. Andy Arms out to a 7 tenth of a second lead over Joshua McQuiggan. See if McQuiggan can close in. We'll see what Ricardo Bernal can do here. This is going to be the challenge now. Can this... He's the 056, he's got the 8 on the side of the car. Can he clear these two in front of him and set after Randy Arms? That's going to be important to watch. Same thing for Nick Miller. What kind of inroads can he make on the fresher tires? We just got around Magnus. Should easily be able to get around Thomas Green. Absolutely. But Thomas Green has to be careful that this race doesn't get away from him. get too far and lose too many positions and somehow find himself on the outside looking in Nick Miller through Ricardo Bernal he's kind of just holding serve right now in the fourth position 
Andy Arm I'm still maintaining a 7 tenth of a second lead over McQuiggan, who's been under pressure from Bowers for a couple of laps. Bernal using up those rear tires. A little sideways off turn number two last time. I think now's going to be the real challenge for Miller. He's going to have to get through all three of these cars. Yeah, the battle between Nick Miller and Ricardo Bernal is going to be critical. It's going to be critical for Ricardo Bernal to, to get around the guys ahead of him. It's just a critical portion of the race right now. Randy Arms is loving what he's seeing right now. Here's Jonathan Dolly. He's cracked the top 10 in a must-win situation. Fillers back to 11th on the old tires. We got a battle for second. Bowers trying to get up around McQuiggan. And he'll do so. Lost three tenths on our race leader doing it, but a change of second. Ricardo Bernal now trying to get involved. Looks like that is Kevin Bullion for a pit stop. But all this battling is going to bring Nick Miller right into contention. He's going to actually clear Ricardo Bernal, so that's a key moment in this race on the fresh oh, tires. Quick and loose in front of him into the wall. And all trying to fight back, shoving him into turn number three up the racetrack. That, that's unnecessarily spicy there, but. And he'll hold position. He has six tenths to Brandon Bowers, one and a half seconds to our race leader. I, I didn't think Nick Miller did anything to Ricardo to, you know, make him upset, but Ricardo seemed very unhappy with Nick Miller. He took advantage of the situation. That's all he did. Didn't move him out of the way, but Carl will sit back in fourth, and Nick Miller will try and move after Brandon Bowers. And I think he's got the quickest car on the racetrack right now. 24-2 for Randy, 24 flat for Bowers, and a 23.8 for Nick Miller. So he's absolutely the quickest car on the racetrack. I think the three best cars on track are the drivers, one, two, three, right now. It's all the difference of tires. We're actually getting into the closing stages of this race already. Well past halfway. Down to 40 to go. Absolutely. Let's look at some battles further back. Justin Johnson, Ryan Tiller, Magnus Anderson. And Thomas Green, who, like we saw for McElroy, Probably thinks he made a mistake by not pitting. Everyone's going to have to pit one more time at least, though. And he's These still last got some two. decent track position. These last two times by Bowers has been faster than Nick Miller. Barely, but he has been. I think the dirty air is caught up to Miller. Yeah, but Bowers has also closed in on Randy Arms as well. The three cars under a blanket here. See how they can get through this lab traffic. Got to crank it up. Redemption not at a bad time either, right before green flag pit stops. James Jimmy Fillows is in the lap 35, one of only two. But here is the battle for the race lead. Maybe if Nick Miller's internet will comply. He dives it off into turn number three. All over the back bumper of Randy Arms. Nick Miller, same kind of concern that Thomas Green would have. If you can knock Randy Arms out of the playoffs, go ahead and do it. Randy going to fight around on the high side, though. Ooh. He's getting loose up and on that And here comes Brandon Bowers, but they're both 
pitted on lap number 50. They don't really have the tires to compete. Randy right on the back bumper gonna shove Miller up the hill. Desperate to hang on to his position. If I'm Randy, I might consider pitting here, just splitting it in half. Again, well, trying to get to the back again. bumper of him. I think if you're Randy Arms or Bowers, you come in and pit right now. You have half of a fuel run left of this race. I, I don't think it's too too early to come in. I would I would immediately come in now that you've lost the track position. Yeah, Jordan you're not Kernow, get to I believe. Back bumper again. No, that was your best shot. And the gap's only gonna get larger, and if he comes in and pits before you, you're gonna have all the more work to do. Unless you're worried about pitting and getting trapped two laps down. That's a consideration oh. here as well. Because that's Randy's getting loose. Those tires are starting to go. He's pushing it really hard. And Bowers it, is backing it down. That's Bowers what we is said. It. Bowers is a fan of the broadcast. Don't speed, though. This is the money stop. Ooh, 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 ooh. It and wouldn't this... be the first time a Jughead driver sped on a critical stop. That's so out of... That's so rude. It's true, though. It is. We'll see here. Oh, oh Randy's coming like in. That. Justin Johnson through to third. Fillers, the first man to pit. So he's trying to get his laps back before a caution were to come out. As they go just 35 miles an hour, they're crawling. Ryan Hatch is in. Kevin Bully has been in for some time. A couple of minutes now for the 27 crew. He's got to go all the way down to this second pit box. He'll be down in 16th. Just watching Nick Miller go by. Before he even got into his box, Nick Miller was around. So I wonder how long does Nick Miller go? How long does Thomas Green go? He's still pitted, last pitted on lap 35. Had a couple of cautions to stretch it, but Thomas Green definitely making these tires work as well as they can. Randy Arms is back on the racetrack, and he'll lose position to Bowers. The one lap, and he is cleared by at least two seconds. Under pressure from Fillers as well. Randy was fighting the car on exit. He was trying to gas it up a little too hard there. Now he's got 2.4 seconds on Brandon Bowers. Fillers has a couple laps, older tires. He might start to fade here, but he's in contention for the net lead. But Bowers with a great call. That's why you listen to your broadcasters. Just over 25 laps to go. Scarebo is in, and they crash, entering pit road. They get it cleared up, though. He just came in way too hot, bounced off the inside wall. A-OK -okay there, not for the 59, but for the overall course of the race and Thomas Green and here comes Andrew Tendleton. Nice stop for the 45 crew, four mile productions driver. The lap 61 guys aren't going to blink though because they want to run it out as far as they can and they don't want to get trapped the lap down if a caution were to come out. Randy Arms has got it all to do here with 25 to go. 2.5 seconds on Brandon Bowers. As they continue to leapfrog up the order slowly but surely. Larry McKenzie Jr. is the first car one lap down, I believe. 26 laps to go. I think... Right now, Nick Miller's biggest enemy <laughs> might be his internet with off, and he's blinking out. Right. I wonder if Nick, Nick Miller is just looking at potentially going the distance with how far Thomas Green has gone. Absolutely. That's something to consider here as well. Nick Miller... 61, Thomas Green, 35. Someone's wrecking. There's a wreck on the back stretch. I believe that's Hatch. And Yellow is out, and this, again, changes everything. Thomas Green was going to pit that lap as well. And Ryan Hatch, we've said that a couple oh, of that times here Justin tonight. Justin L. Johnson. Take a look at what happened. 
Ash was just now leaving the pits. Getting up to speed. Oh, and the transition caught him out. Oh, and huge damage there to Justin. Samuel Damien involved as well. We'll see if Justin can even hang on. Let's go on board. The wheel looks to be straight. Bowers is on new hardware, so he won't crash, but he's trapped the lap down now. Hatch is still parked on track. <laughs> but here comes everyone in, and that is a killer for Randy Arms. Uh, they're going to have the older tires, and they're not going to have the track position to boot. Nick Miller has stayed out on the racetrack for some reason. Because he's going to trap them a lap down. But he's not going to win the race now. He's This is purely to keep guys from advancing. Randy Arms, McQuiggan, Magnus Anderson. That's a strategic yeah. move if I've ever seen one. Because, yeah, if we get another quick caution and he's the only one that has to come down... Wow. wow. There's only 12 <laughs> cars on the lead lap. Brandon Bowers, McQuiggan, then Randy Arms. Oh my goodness. So Nick Miller has thrown away the race win by having 40 lap holder tires in an attempt to hopefully have this race go green to the end to keep out some very heavy hitters. Let's take a look here at our side by side. If this holds, Thomas Green will be in. Obviously sitting P2. That's the third and final spot. Nick Miller's already in. He's got no concerns. Justin Johnson would be in. He's actually able to avoid calamity there. And that would be the four. Anderson out, McQuiggan out, Randy Arms out, and Dahlia. I mean, there's no question about it. The top four that are in would, would advance. So they're going to need multiple cautions here to try and get... I mean, because McQuiggan's going to fight Bowers for the lucky dog. Randy Arms has got to fight. I mean, it, there's going to be another caution with how hard these guys are having to fight. But they're, yeah. they are running out of laps to, to do something, even if they get the lucky dog. And Nick Miller might have gone to the end anyways. I, th I think he thinks he's good anyways, because lap 61, he didn't come down and pit. He's going to use these cautions to save fuel, and uh, he'll try and go to the end here. And but, even if a driver does get a lucky dog, that's still an EOL. Yeah, like, I mean, you they, have to be behind they, all the lap cars. Randy Arms, I don't think has a chance. I think the top four currently is is what we're gonna have. That is gonna be one heck of a spicy strategy call. Absolutely. Because if you're the one driver that stays out, and you cause every other driver to be stuck. All the playoff drivers that are fighting to be stuck up down. I'm just saying it might make your final four a little harder. <laughs> it would. Battle for the lucky right dog, there. though. Brand Brandon Bowers is just racing for the win, so I mean he probably wants lucky dog anyways. Randy Arms. And McQuiggan actually has the fresh tires. He came in right as the caution flew. So I think it might go to McQuiggan, but even then. I don't see a way for him to win this race. I think Thomas Green, I mean, it's it's really all to play for here between our top 12, but my goodness. Yeah, if this ends with, you know, Magnus McQuiggan and Randy not getting in, McQuiggan and Randy, <laughs> I'd probably the his, one. <laughs> yeah, Final Four, you're not getting around me easy. I'm pulling Ryan Newman. Absolutely. I'll wreck Pablo myself Montoya. before I let you through. When you you know you're the favorite you're the fans coming in next week to watch and you see Nick Miller get next to these guys you just get nervous that's what I always felt like <laughs> I see I saw Dale Jr. get next to Juan Paulo Montoya and I was just like oh boy here we go here's a 50 lap battle but Nick Miller on the the shaky internet and the old tires he's loose almost got turned himself by Justin L. Johnson. I mean, he's going to find himself. Ricardo Bernal around the high side, three wide. Jonathan Dolly actually is going to have a shot at this. He's sixth, now fifth in the closing stages. 
Keep an eye on that 74 to shock the world here. He did it at Talladega a couple of weeks ago. Only nine tenths off the lead. It's all about the short run speed now. He had really good short run speed and these front three, four might wreck each other. Ricardo real aggressive. Here is the battle for the lucky dog. It goes right to Joshua McQuiggan, and they're fighting. They got around Nick there. Miller. That's the guy that kind of screwed him over. But it's McQuiggan clear by half a second now as Nick Miller goes right to the back of the lead lap cars. Only has Pinder, Zach Scare, and Larry McKenzie to get around, and they will quite easily. Just now Johnson in the wall, Ricardo oh. in the wall, contact between Ricardo and Justin. Doesn't help when the internet connection is unstable. Jonathan Dolly in fifth is right on the tail end. He's got to clear these cars as quick as possible. If we get a Jonathan Dolly race when it's over, I will lose my mind. Nick Miller all the way back to 11th out of the picture. Surprising no quick caution though on what could have been the most important restart. Randy Arms on seven lap older tires. Then McQuiggan set the fastest lap of the race. <laughs> Randy Arms is driving angry. Again, I don't, even if he got the lead lap, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything with it. McQuiggan's not going to roll over for the lucky dog either. You kind of have to fight it as hard as you possibly can. But, I mean... It's just such an unfortunate situation. And they're all single file around the bottom now. They want to come home with some good finishes. This would be a great finish for Brandon Kiger, Casey Brown, Chris Pinder, top 10. Zach Scare, top 10. I mean, this would be great nights for those guys. They don't want to wreck. Thomas Green just has to bring it home. Dolly up to fourth, though. Justin Johnson has to be careful, though. He realizes that Dolly's in a must-win. Hager wants a top five. Oh, and Dolly, he's giving it absolutely everything he's got. But it looks like Thomas Green comfortably ahead at the moment. 13 laps to go. McQuiggan still holds the lucky dog spot. Randy Arms close in tow to keep him honest, but nothing imminent yet on that front. Ryan Tiller, William Bowman. Larry McKenzie Jr. He was just trying to keep the car in one piece, and he could be looking at an 11th place finish here if he can get Nick Miller. Great night for the 32. He's within a second of him. But it's all Thomas Green. Dominated the opening part of the lap. Held on when the strategy went against him. And caught a break at the end. And yeah, the, the track's just so spread out. The car's not really near each other. It's all about how hard Justin Johnson wants to push. He's in if he stays third, so I imagine he won't push very hard. Dolly looks He's like in even if Dolly gets around him. Dolly has to go two and a half seconds to catch up to Thomas Green, so. I think it's pretty much all set and stowed. Final four, Thomas Green, Nick Miller, Justin Johnson, and Drew Joie, who's not here tonight. So he had to win, and he did. Now it would be Joshua McQuiggan, Randy Arms, Magnus Anderson, Jonathan Dolly. Jonathan Dolly in P4. There's a couple battles. A lot of guys close up to each other. But no one close up to Thomas Green. Thomas Green with eight laps to go. All he's got to do is bring it home. Got two and a half seconds on Justin Johnson. This race flew by, didn't it? And we're all an hour 15 in, and we're right there at the end. No, no shortage of action, though. That's for sure. A real close call there between Kiger and McQuiggan. Kiger inside the top five. Great night for him. 
little further back, some some action, but it has to kick off pretty much now. Randy Arms still driving mad, getting around guys on older tires. And the, the luck for Randy Arms in the, in the round of eight just went absolutely nowhere. That's because we kept picking them. Yeah. Carter Bernal now. Ooh, Randy loose in front of Bowers. Causing a stack up there, able to keep it straight. Randy pushing for everything he's got. It, it hurts. It really does. It hurts me. Randy was running a great race. Like, I don't know if he was catching Bowers after that pit stop, but still. We, we didn't get a chance to see. But Drew Jawah had three wins on the season. Thomas Green looking to tie that right back up here. So he's coming Ooh. off. Kiger getting the top four. Ricardo Renault slapped the wall. Jonathan Dolly to P3. I mean, he gave it absolutely everything in the second half of this race. He he really came alive. This He's going to make the point standings look a lot better. Absolutely. Battling away here still for P4 side by side. Where where, where is the uh, where's the phantom? Yeah, where's the debris caution? <laughs> we need one more. But, I mean, uh, this is our last chance. McQuiggan's Halfway still the lucky. Yeah. McQuiggan's still the lucky dog candidate. Thomas Green trying to get through three and four as quick as he can. A couple guys side by side, but it doesn't matter. Off of turn number four, white flag in the air. Race is official. Through one and two, three seconds back to Justin Johnson. If they wreck now, it's completely irrelevant. Thomas Green was... Came into tonight third in the standings, the best on points, but he'll lock himself in the hard way with a win through three and four for the final time. He's going to Vegas next week. He's trying to be lucky and win a title. Thomas Green, your winner. The battle for Just the now, podium. Johnson, P2, Jonathan Dolly, P3. Casey Brown, top five. Ricardo Bernal faded late, but a strong night for him. Ryan Tiller, Pinder, William Bowman, Zach Scare. This is just a strong night for all of them. <laughs> all because Nick Miller, P11, with the strategy call of the year. Larry McKenzie Jr. rounds out in 12th. And I mean, I don't blame him. There are just some people you don't want to yeah. see in the Final Four. Oh, he'll, he'll see him again. I, I'm positive of that. He will see them again. <laughs> <laughs> they will they will not make it easy for the 20 machine i'm sure of that but joshua mcquiggan randy arms magnus anderson and jonathan dolly are eliminated from the playoffs tonight the mental math was actually pretty easy tonight and we'll go ahead and uh head over to the Thomas Green, I think he's still doing some burnouts. Absolutely well-deserved, well-managed race on pole. Came home right where he started. Let me know when you want me to bring him in. Absolutely. We'll wait for Thomas Green to do his... Uh, oh, I think he's already here. Ah, go ahead and move him. I see him down there all by himself. Here with your race winner, Thomas Green in the 13th. It's... Usually a good thing. You start where you finish. Uh, means some consistency, but uh, especially even better when you qualify on pole. And that was just a well-managed race from yourself there. Uh, potentially caught out on strategy, but uh, it ended up working out in your favor. Talk me through your race tonight. Yeah, man. Uh, it's just such a difficult race. You know, this was track temp is so hot, and it got a little colder as a uh, as uh, we went on throughout the race. But yeah, man, it was it was slick. It was hot. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun. I knew uh, qualifying was going to be important there, and uh, I didn't think tires were going to be as important until I made that decision to stay out, which I uh, probably should not have done, but it worked out for us. Somehow, we played uh, the perfect strategy to, to get a win and uh, lock ourselves into the championship round. 
Absolutely. You head to Las Vegas next week, uh, a mile and a half race where we've seen some of the most intense racing of the season. How do you like your chances? Uh, it's a good track for me overall. I really like Vegas. And, uh, you know, it's it's all about this car. You know, it's just they keep updating the car and they keep making it better. And I don't know. We're, we're going to have to put a lot of laps in definitely because we got a lot of really, really good competition to go up against next week. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be definitely a good one. I'm glad that that's the championship race. I think that'll be a really cool, really cool track car combo for a championship race. And, uh, yeah, I, I like our odds, but, I mean, I know – keep myself humble because I know exactly who we got to go up against next week, and that's going to be really difficult. We've been battling all, all season, and uh, they've been nothing but clean, fun racing and really hard racing, and uh, got some fast competition next week, so I'm excited. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Well, congratulations on the win here tonight. Locking yourself into that round of four before we let you go. Any shout outs or anyone you need to say hi to? I just want to say a big shout out to my girlfriend, Anna. Always supporting me week in and week out. I love her to death. I'm the luckiest person on this planet to have her by my side and and uh, always showing me support. So I love her very much. A big shout out to her. And a big shout out to you guys for the broadcast. I always love watching it back. And this one's definitely going to be a fun one to watch. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again. I look forward to seeing you next week in Vegas. Thank you, guys. Here with P2, Justin Johnson. He did exactly what he needed to do tonight to get himself locked into the round of four. Um, Well-managed race, no mistakes. Uh, got kind of hairy there for you at points. Randy Arms. Um, looking like he was in contention from the wind tonight, and that would have caused some stress on the points. But uh, obviously, due to the course of strategy, it didn't play out, and all you had to do was bring the car home. Uh, what were you feeling out there tonight? Uh, any pressure, or how 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 was the uh, the points in the back of your mind tonight at all? Uh, on the on that long green flag run before the final caution, I was pretty calm about it. Actually, I thought I had a good strategy, and I thought it would all play out uh, for me. Absolutely, and then obviously, uh, you you timed the caution uh, that last caution well. Uh, got yourself on the the lead lap, and then at that point it was just really bringing the car home. Once everyone else was trapped a lap down, right? Yeah, that last caution. Oh, he scared me. I saw him go up the track, and I was down here, and then I see him hit me. It was that was that was scary. I thought I was done for. Yeah, obviously, um, involved in the caution, but still on the lead lap. Uh, was there any damage to the car? Could you have potentially challenged for the win without it had you not been involved? There was some left rear damage, but I think I definitely could have could have a uh, challenge for maybe even won the race i had a save i i try i tried to i auto fueled the car and i didn't put everything i needed in it so i had to save those last five laps instead right. of actually pushing yeah, that makes sense the auto fuel strikes again but uh nevertheless uh we head to las vegas next week you find yourself a part of the championship four how do you like your odds oh, i love vegas you know vegas you know you go gambling in vegas and i would bet my own odds there so Fair enough. Love the confidence. But yeah, it should be a good race. Uh, these cars do some uh, pretty impressive things on the mile and a half. And, uh, and looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. But uh, congratulations on a well-ran race for P2. Any shout-outs you got for, for the broadcast booth? Uh, I'm going to shout-out Nick Miller. He played a big part in the strategy tonight. He's been awesome. I wish he could have won the race instead, but you know he's been awesome, so I'm going to shout-out him. Absolutely. He was the sacrificial lamb at the end. Uh, he trapped some pretty heavy hitters lap down, and uh, uh, it made for an interesting... I mean, obviously, y you know who the contenders are. You know who you want to race. You know who you don't want to race. And uh, he didn't give McQuiggan, Magnus, Randy Arms a chance at it. So uh, we'll see how that plays out next week. But yeah, it was, a, it was a brilliant strategy call from his point of view. Yeah, it was great. Uh, thank you guys for having me, and hopefully I can be in here first next week. <laughs> Absolutely. We're looking forward to it, and good luck. We'll see you next week. All right, thank you guys. Here with P3, Jonathan, Jonathan Dolly, and uh, kind of qualified mid-pack there. Uh, car was kind of just stuck battling away right around the, in the mid-teens for the first half of the race. Second half of the race, however, that car came alive, and you had a shot at the win at the end uh obviously came up just that little bit short uh but definitely a, a very encouraging second half of the race what, what did you see out there tonight um <laughs> a lot of ups and downs in my heart i tell you what the first um first incident with ryan i was pretty upset about that you know i thought he could have slowed off and given me some leniency but you know it's kind of pushed me through and i spun it almost but and then uh, of course he had that big wreck on the back 
And I thought my race was over at that point, but we managed to salvage back to a uh, third place. I will tell you boys right now, that is the hardest I've ever driven a car in my life. Absolutely. You were driving the wheels off it. It just came alive for you. I don't know if the track temp changed to where you got comfortable or you just started. Oh, I hitting. got comfortable. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looked like, but uh, you, you were flying there at the end. Just took four. I forgot. I just said some hell note of the damage, and I was just like, you know, whatever happens now, it happens. We got to go. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, oh, gotta got to offer some thanks to Michael, you know, uh, amazing Talladega spotter, helping me through that, giving me advice throughout the way. Absolutely. I mean, like, seriously, it was you might have been the quickest car on the track at one point in that second half. You were just flying through the oh, field. Yeah. It was a twenty-three point two eight nine. I think it's my fastest lap. Obviously, coming up just that little bit short though, uh, it might just make you even. Was that the quick? Yeah, that was the fastest lap. I got sidetracked. Yeah, you were. You did have the quick. Oh wait. Oh, Thomas Green. Ran I was. I was short by Thomas Green. Ah, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Nick Miller. Okay. But nevertheless, uh, one of the few guys in the in the twenty three twos so definitely showed your speed. Um, but coming up just that little bit short, obviously you won Talladega and then had some some kind of rough luck the first two weeks. Um, but it, it just should make you that much hungrier uh, to to come back next year stronger and then maybe even go out uh, in Vegas and win the whole and win the whole race. Oh yeah, I mean, I, first of all, I've got to apologize to YJ. I let you down, uh, especially you, Art. Sorry about that. But uh, it is what it is. Looking looking back at this season, it's been a, a lot of ups and downs. I've had a, a lot of improvement moments, and it's just been a crazy year. I, I know for a fact about 90% of this league thought I wouldn't get anywhere near this point in uh, in a season. They probably thought that Talladega was a, a Mickey win, but look at me now, boys. Yeah, absolutely. Probably your best race of the year, even though you come up just a little bit short. But it was seriously uh, very impressive. We said, hang on a minute. Um we're watching Jonathan Dolly come here. I mean, those guys were trapped the lap down, some heavy hitters. We thought the point standings were pretty much uh, locked in, but uh, you gave it all you could. That car was sideways off a of turn four a couple times, and uh, you were wheeling that thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got I got to offer some quick thanks to uh, all of my supporters uh, across the season, especially Andrew Tendall and Devin. They gave me a whole lot this season, Michael, and uh, uh, Four Mile, obviously, for sponsoring this race and being on the car. So uh, it's... Thank you guys so much for all of this and all you guys do for making this league what it is. It's been so much fun. Absolutely, yeah. You guys, we'll, uh, we'll close up the season next week. Uh, yeah, I got a couple. I'll just say uh, your team ran well tonight. Ten was in the top ten. Uh, he got caught up late, I think, just with strategy. Um, but Kiger ran really well <laughs> tonight. I think his career best finish. Um, so you guys definitely put a lot oh, of yeah. work in this. He season. was catching me on that last lap by yeah, a lot. One more lap, I don't think I would have had it. And uh, yeah, I was I was looking in my mirror. <laughs> but uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about the Four Mile Productions group. I know they are very highly uh, supportive of your your guys' efforts. So just tell me a little bit about them and them coming on board for this race tonight. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm the last person you should ask this. Fair that's enough. all. That's all. Tennell's doing. And he not I here. Know the that... one time he's not here. No, but... <laughs> they uh they pay my paycheck. So uh... <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but it's cool to see. Uh, it's cool to see people getting out supporting sim racing, and uh, definitely a, a bonus yeah. to have you guys around. So I'm glad that they uh, make that possible, and uh, appreciate them supporting the league for a good cause as well. Oh yeah, and, and thanks to all the new people who came onto the stream tonight. I know I tried my best to get some new faces in here, but uh, thanks to everyone else who came out to watch this tonight. I'm sure you had a good show. Ah, here's Tennel. He heard he heard media obligations and oh. jumped right in the waiting room. Oh, so. there you go. Yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Here we go. Yeah, get him in here real quick. Tattle, you, you, you had a good, <laughs> good, good overall result tonight as a team. Uh, tell me a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit more about Four Mile Productions uh, as tonight's race sponsor. Huh? Tattle, you live, bud? This man loves to talk about sponsor obligations. This is not the real Tattle. <laughs> I feel I feel Could so be. Sorry, Never my mic be. is muted. Okay, so four mile production <laughs> there we go. Out of Pennsylvania area. They uh basically what they do is they make multimedia uh, you know, MP fours and P threes for uh, a bunch of companies, including us. Um we haven't really utilized any of them yet. It's more soundtrack and um you know, that kind of stuff. Uh ed video editing. We haven't really gone through all that. They've just kind of been on board supporting us financially. Uh, they definitely help pay the bills. And, uh, you know, big shout out to Andy. 
I know he watches these races, and uh, you know, Andy, without you, none of this is possible. Especially this team, uh, you know, my my co-owner Devin Galvin, he's an amazing guy, and uh, we we are very very happy with uh, Jonathan's performance this year. Um, you know, I've told I told Jonathan uh, about a month and a half ago when I was at his house that he is probably uh, he's arguably the greatest TGR employee to date, and um, you know, it's just we're very humble and uh, we're very thankful that we're able to do this and be a part of the uh, the affinity racing series it's um this is probably the greatest league on i racing the, the community within it the diversity the uh the, you know everybody wants to help each other get better and that's just that's the amazing part um i can tell you now that channel galvin racing we 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 will be back for season two uh we plan to be back even stronger um better we plan to have all four of our uh cars up front and uh competing for wins you know um I don't know, we're just very excited to be here, but, you know. Well, obviously, I'll be back in the 45. Devin will be back in the uh, the 95. We are going to offer a contract, uh, like a, t- a continuation of the contract with Brandon Kiger and the 47 team, as well as uh, we've already signed Jonathan until, I believe, 2026. So this guy's here for the long run. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're just very, very humble to be here. Uh, I know we can't. We, uh, a lot of us came from a pretty icky place, and uh, I don't know. I think I, I don't know. We're just we're so humble to be here. Um, it's, it's awesome. It really is. Every Monday, I, I, even though I have to go to work on Monday, I still <laughs> love Mondays because yes. I get to race. And I, I really hope the ARS continues the post cup racing on Monday nights. Yeah. Um, it, it's gonna be ARS is doing such amazing stuff, man. Like with the. Uh, St. Jude's Fund uh, Children's Research or uh, research, uh, Children's Research Hospital. They're doing amazing stuff with that, raising money. And uh, you know, I think I heard uh, the amount of money that we've raised so far. It's like three or four uh, chemo sessions, and that's amazing to know that we're gonna help somebody who could use it. Um, you know, so if anyone's listening still, watching these uh, interviews, uh, please go and support the uh, the league and its foundation or its contribution to an amazing foundation. There's Amazing people out there who need it more than me or you. Um, uh, it's just this place is amazing, and uh, they're doing amazing stuff. I know season two is going to be very, very different, and I'm really looking forward to everything. I know they're demoting, us, uh, you know, some drivers to the truck series, and that's going to be interesting to see how they do down there, and then possibly even come back up to Cup. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I don't know. It's just we're. We're here for the long haul, so. Absolutely. We'll always appreciate talking to you guys and uh, some good stuff happening for you guys and for ARS as well. And we can't wait for uh, for next season. And uh, we got one more race, though, and uh, we'll be looking to see y'all guys on Monday night. Absolutely. We'll be Absolutely. Yep. Thank y'all so much. Yep. I appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Vegas, baby. <laughs> Get them out. We got Nick Miller, yeah, the Nick man Miller. making enemies. So right, you really the only thing we got to you, you threw away a race win tonight, um, but it was a hundred percent strategic move to keep some heavy hitters uh, out of the championship four, trapped everybody a lap down. It went green to the end, and uh, that was that. But uh, yeah, obviously you know as the driver who you want to face in the championship four, Randy. McQuiggan, uh, just some of the quickest guys on track all season. So definitely, uh, probably the strategy move of the year if you can pull it off next week. Yeah, uh, sacrifice was made. I uh, I gave up a gift and I don't another win for this. So hopefully it works out next week. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean you got... it's gonna be a lot harder. <laughs> I, I yeah, met... I know. I'm sure there's a couple of unhappy people. I know McQuiggan ran into me at the end of that race, so he's probably <laughs> upset. You gave us some uh, content even before the championship week, so the media week or whatever, and it'll be good. Um, I mean, hey, if anything, just blame Hatch. I mean, me, me, and Justin were <laughs> fine. We 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 were gonna make that race to the end no matter what. I don't think I don't think we were like, we weren't gonna have to pit. So either way, I, I, I was either that or, or something was gonna happen. Zach Scare said fifty six laps. I'm like, oh, everyone has to pit, and then you come here and tell me this. I got to fight Scare later. But uh, yeah, um, I respect it though. I mean, that's that's a gutsy move to pull off. Obviously, the week before the championship race, um, and it worked out. So if you can if you can pull it off next week at Vegas, um, then it's going to be move of the year for sure. Um, but with going to Vegas, how do you like your odds there? Obviously, a mile and a half track, and uh, it's been probably the source of our best battles all season. How do you like your chances? 
Um, Vegas is probably a top five track for me, so I'm really hoping. I'm, I'm hoping it's day, but knowing how this the, the schedule has panned out the entire season, I'm assuming it's going to be a night race. Right. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, Vegas is fun. Hopefully we get um, some pit stops under green and it can space out the field or something because I know it's going to be a, like a pretty much a pack race if it is at night. Absolutely. Well, like I said, gutsy call. Uh, um, I can appreciate it from up here in the booth. If it plays off, uh, you're, you're, you're genius. Um, and uh, we'll just wait and see how it all plays out. Looking forward to next Monday night. Yep. <laughs> How we do it, fellas? You're Hold good. on. We got a Chris Pender top 10. We got a William Bowman top 10. Solid night for you guys. Oh, man. Thank you, Nick Miller. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he affected the championship fight, and he affected, a, a, I mean, the whole half of the field was trapped a lap down there at the end. Um, but that, that was a fun one to watch. Yeah. I know uh, you guys were saying uh, pre-race – uh, we were talking, the car was on ice, it was loose, and it certainly looked the part. Um, but you guys were able to hang on to it. Kind of. I think there was <laughs> one point where Pinder and, and William, you guys were battling it out. And, uh, yeah, William, at the you very had, end, and William, other times we were. Yeah, William, you had got around, and the very next the lap, there was like a bobble, and, and then he got back by, and it was just racing throughout the field. It was pretty, pretty good stuff. Yeah, it was a good race. Not really. I really didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I Which didn't. I didn't enjoy the ninth, the eighth place finish. No, it, it just that track went from being super fun, and they either changed something with the track or the car, and it was awful to drive. <laughs> oh, it sounds like prime. It probably kind of bike tires on the back end of the car. <laughs> sounds like prime Kyle Busch. I'm sitting inside the top ten. This car sucks. This track sucks. That's, that's prime KB right there. <laughs> yeah, I do so love Kyle Bush. <laughs> it's kind of cool. His wife saw it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was almost it was a light knuckle race almost every lap. Absolutely, <clears throat> just to keep her from spinning on you. Mm-hmm. But that made it fun. Yeah, really, it puts into the driver. It puts it in the driver's hands. I know it's hard to drive and it might spread out the field, but uh, if you can hang on to the to the race car, you come away with a good finish. Heck yeah. yeah, or just Whatever like you. trap half the field that's faster than your lap down. You come over with a good finish. It all yeah. works out. Well. To be fair, that, well. that that I understand why he did it. That doesn't happen if we don't wreck under the green flag pit stop. No, you're you're one hundred percent right. And like I wanted to see it go. Feelings of Nick Miller aside, yeah, not a stupid move. Like I said, he's because he did a lot of enemies. He, yeah. he made a lot of enemies, but he eliminated all like half the people that could have beat him. Yeah. So he knows he's not fast enough to do it, and he just removed them. It's a smart move. That can also eliminate I, him next week. Yeah. I mean, to yeah. be fair, he, I think he has the speed. They're just probably the biggest competition. I think Nick Miller could easily win it on speed. Um, he doesn't have the but, luck to go along with it this season. He's been kind of caught out a bunch of times. But I think Randy and McQuiggan definitely were going to be some of the biggest competitions. Because Thomas Green was already there. You can't. You can't. He was already in, so it doesn't really matter. But... Randy, if he was going to be able to to win, which he looked like he was on pace for at one point, that that changes the whole complexion. He just took that right out of the equation. But uh, no, McQuiggan's gonna. I don't think McQuiggan's pleased whatsoever. Um, so we'll uh, we'll just see. Um, raging, yeah. Um, just like in his in his bedroom, throwing a binder against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Give me a snack, mom. If if it works out, he looks like a genius, though. I mean, if he ends up winning the whole thing, then move of the year. I'm not obviously. too concerned about that guy looking like a genius. <laughs> Better uh, stop him. He has, he has a bad year. I just a minus two point penalty. Um, I just realized <laughs> Travis wasn't here. Just realized that. I saw him. I was. Wait, wait a minute. Am I... No, I wasn't in the race. That's I what I said. It's like I saw him putting the emotes and stuff, but I, you've typed a couple times during the race, but. Uh, what was so important you had to 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 not fulfill your contractual I worked. obligation? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I worked late. I'm one guy down for six weeks. So. Oh no. Surgery. Hmm. Well, your boys did you proud tonight, though. They did a they did a nice job. Max, I was uh sitting there with McElroy and them, watching the race. Yeah. Typing in your chat. Yep. Good stuff, though. 
Um, we had a tie for dinner. Beef. What was for dinner? What do I have for dinner? Uh, tacos. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had Art? a chicken and bacon sandwich. He ate. Let's go. Let's go. Mm-hmm. That sounds Ooh. good. Good job. Anybody else? Oh, uh, cheeseburger uh, stuff. Ooh, smash burgers. burgers. Smash burgers. Love it. Corbin had spaghetti. See that in the chat? I'm having spaghetti this weekend. I'm kind of excited you, about you it. He always eats like a child, though. How is spaghetti a child's meal? You sitting there slurping on noodles? I mean, if they're good enough, yeah. Child? We're having it this weekend, and I'm kind of looking <laughs> forward to it. I have it like three times a year, and I'm like, uh, I'm really looking forward to it, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, well, he has it often. That's why I'm saying he always eats like a child. <laughs> well, if it's like SpaghettiOs, then yeah. It might honestly be like... Corbin spells out his food. I, I know for a fact he gets boxed mac and cheese. So. <laughs> yes, Ryan, I did say tacos. So. Yeah, why is your guy looking like an idiot? I think my guy looks pretty damn cool. You have a woman with pink lipstick, and you're going to comment that my golfer looks an idiot? Yeah, she's, about to, she's about to outdrive you right now. <laughs> uh, well, we play P, uh, what PGA Tour or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're going to shoot 18 nice. after the race. I love it. I'm, I'm trying to get McElroy in here, but I think he's reviewing things. Cor- Corbin confirmed he had SpaghettiOs and meatballs yesterday. Okay, so he's a child. All right. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you argued with me. Corbin, you spell out like you get the, the alphabet soup. <laughs> Mm. Uh, is Vegas a day or day race or night race next week? Pretty sure it'll be under the lights. Ooh, people are gonna be happy about that. Yeah. Um. The, I think the paint. Thanks, Josh. I'm a bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the paint schemes look better at night, so uh, it looks it looks visually appealing. I don't know if it races better. Probably doesn't, but you know. We'll just figure it out. I need a new paint scheme. Anyone got any ideas? Any suggestions? I'll take them. Mexican flag. <laughs> Quick Creek. Uh, <clears throat> nice yellow Quick Creek card probably could look cool. Something Vegas related. I don't know. Do a do a Wyndham Resorts paint scheme. I don't know. That's the thing I think of. I think you're onto something there. Do a uh, Elvis yeah, yeah, card. Yeah. Do a huggers and cocaine car, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I haven't. It's kind of who's who take the championship home: Thomas Green, Nick Miller, Drew Jawa, or Justin Johnson. Thomas I Green. think it's. I think it's Drew. I think Nick Miller. Like this, this really feels like a Ty Gibbs versus JRM situation. JRM was too cowardice to do anything though. They just said, exactly. "Oh, go right on by. We'll just let him win." Nick Miller's not going to make it. I'm telling you, he done. He done pissed off too many people tonight. Like we we say that. But that's what people said about Ty Gibbs and Ty Gibbs. I still won. can't believe Brandon Jones didn't junk him immediately. <laughs> I, I just can't get over that. But he's like, yeah, you wrecked me on purpose, knocked me out of the championship, and I'm just gonna roll over. As because we're teammates. I mean, just just like real life. And he was leaving to a completely like, different team next season. Like this was the last race. He was already had the contract signed. I cannot believe it. This is virtual. We don't have those repercussions. You can junk I mean, up as you, much you stuff still, as possible, though. You can just. But junk you still up. have repercussions from like. People not liking you racing you next season. I mean, right next week. <laughs> <laughs> I, there is no repercussions if uh, if it's that serious. You just go out and junk them lap one. No fast repairs. Toe link gone. It's over. And then we got championship three. If it's that, roll on. Yeah. <laughs> so roll on. I'm I'm just saying accidents happen. No oh boy. We'll see. It's I, be- I'm not even involved in this. I wasn't even there tonight. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, I, that's a. It's the gutsiest move one can make. You eliminate competition, but at the same time, you you piss off that competition. So we'll just see how it works. Mm-hmm. It's if it if it ends up working out, then like I said, it's uh, move of the year. But uh, I hope gets, it's a good show for everybody. If he gets put firewall deep lap two, then uh, <laughs> you know that's also an option. It, you know. <laughs> It'll be very anticlimactic if he finishes third to Thomas Green. It'll be like, well, that was kind of a waste of everybody's time. We're going to need something to happen. So, uh, I expect it will, though. I don't think uh, it'll be short of entertainment Monday. So, let's finish nope. strong. I, sh- I want to say before we go, uh, Philly Bean said my face for the paint scheme. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Sorry, Jasmine. That's just weird. Hmm. <laughs> nice. All right, fellas. We'll you, always... I'm not gonna lie to her. 
Fair enough. Um, always a pleasure, and we will see you guys next week for the finale. Y'all take it easy. See you, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 I'll preface this Hello. with I picked Randy to win. I'm sorry. I really thought you could break the jinx for me. It's my fault entirely. Max, where do you live? <laughs> so, oh man, yeah, I don't know. I, I was, I was really rooting for you. It's kind of a little personal bias. I was clouded by emotional judgment. I should have known better. Um, yeah, but we had a really good shot. You did. Um, late caution, and then obviously the the strategy call of the year um, from Nick Miller, eliminating the rest of the competition. <laughs> um, and that was really that was it. But uh, you had the speed as usual. Um, so yeah, but uh, the rest of the team ran really well tonight, as well. So it is one of those deals. Yeah. So uh, I, I yeah. yeah, it's a gutsy call to make the week before championship race. We'll have uh, I don't know JRM versus Ty Gibbs potentially. I know McQuiggan <laughs> is hot under the collar, so we'll see. Um, yeah, and he trapped a bunch of other people out down too. So uh, that we'll just see. That's a, it's it's very gutsy. Yeah. His Christmas card list got a lot smaller. <laughs> it did. That's for sure. It did. <laughs> By um, three of the four, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Casey Brown top five, then that's always fun. Yeah, it was uh, an interesting race. Uh, I didn't really have... I had a top ten car for sure, probably, but just uh, didn't have much for uh, anybody else. So just happy to... Come in the top five and stay in the top thirty in points, uh, or thirty-five in points before the cutoff. Yeah, absolutely. How'd the car handle out there tonight? I heard from pretty much everybody else that it was driving on ice loose. Is that uh, what y'all felt out there tonight as well? Have you ever watched the movie Tokyo Drift? <laughs> I have. Can I do the thing? Can I do the thing? No, don't do it. Okay, but yeah, it was. It was pretty loose. It it wasn't bad for about twenty laps, but it's like there was a switch that once you hit a certain lap, boy, was it a handful. <laughs> it looked well, like it is four minutes of damage it then gets tight and it actually puts it down the fastest laps of the race for you so <laughs> guess that was the secret mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Sam you had the you had the good uh, qualified speed and obviously the race didn't end up with uh, the way you would have wanted but you were quick out there tonight before uh, before trouble struck yeah we had probably a podium car probably top three um just caught up in some incidents that probably could have been avoided, but yeah. you know, it's all part of it. Here to race for fun, you know. It's at the end of the day, it's a fun time to get together with everybody and race. So absolutely, and uh, y'all be doing it again tomorrow night. So uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All righty, fellas. Well, y'all have a good race tomorrow. I'll be uh, getting ready. Uh, Stand by on dad duty. So uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck. A, absolutely. I will take. Yeah, uh, I will be here next Monday. Um, but uh, other than that, I'm just kind of behind the scenes a little bit. But uh, I know y'all put on a good show. So sounds good. I won't be there to yeah, jinx you guys anymore. So no more. Oh, hey. oh, <laughs> so all right, fellas. Well, we'll see you next Monday. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. There. Hello. 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 Uh, Magnus, you were unfortunately one of the ones uh, trapped a lap down at the end of this thing too, from Nick Miller, uh, so did not get the chance at the end to uh, to go at it. But uh, yeah, uh, it looked like he had some pretty good speed in the car. Um, it just did not fall your way with the cautions at the end of this thing. Yeah, I mean it's good for the scrubs to get good finishes, so happy for them, you know. <laughs> It sucks, but you know I I understand why Nick A. Miller did it. I I ain't even mad at the his decision. Like I get it. He wants to keep me, Randy and McQuiggan from you know competing with him. And uh, I mean that's that's a move. Uh, I'm certainly not gonna send him uh, firewall deep into a wall for that. Like I I get it entirely. But uh, you know there are some people that cost me some points this year and. You know, we got one more race left in the season, and might be time to get even, eh? Yeah, there's one more race, and a uh, strategic call, like you said, and uh, if he's made some enemies, and uh, it'd be time to settle the score before we move on to next season. So, um, we'll just it, we're not going to be short of entertainment next week, that's for sure. Uh, car race is good on mile and a halfs, 
and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll, there'll definitely be a car firewall deep, but it won't be Nick A. Miller. Oh boy. Uh, well, just just uh, somehow tip us off, or uh, let's let us know so we can get it on the broadcast. So we'll see. <laughs> Uh, lap 69. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Makes sense. But, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with how far we got, you know, eight points out in the, the final round, you know, feels good, especially for how the season started. I was way off pace and made pace later on in the, the season, started doing good and made it to where we're at now. But, uh, you know, overall good season. Um, just time to check the notebook before the last race. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd say the team definitely got better as a whole this season, so uh, definitely uh, some positives to take into next season. Yeah, Logan improved. Um, you know, Hatch had some bad luck, but uh, he'll be in it next week, and hopefully uh, he'll do good. Yeah, finish the season strong, absolutely. Well, we will be there, fellas, for all of it, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I'd like to just shout out uh, Raise Energy, Own Boss Supply Co., Gamer Goo, MKP Performance, and Mark Kiedemann, and uh, Wickedly Boosted. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, appreciate it, fellas, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Yep. Zach Scare, you were the biggest mover tied with Brandon Kiger. You were both 15 spots gained. Congratulations. Well, at least I didn't get into a wreck, so that's a bonus. <laughs> Top 10 for Zach Scare. It's hype. It really is. Well, I heard you guys were making fun of me for hitting the wall, so... That was McElroy. He alerted... I didn't say nothing. That was all McElroy. He said, look, he said, look at this avoidance by Zach Scare. I'm like, ooh, I love a good wreck avoidance, and uh, you did avoid the wreck. I thought I'll leave it at that. Avoided I was like, oh, well. It's either hit a car or hit the wall. I'd rather hit the wall. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But it was fun. Absolutely. Uh, head to Vegas next week for the championship four, and it's, uh, it's going to be uh, exciting, to say the least. So um, no shortage of entertainment. I have no comment on that. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Uh, strategic call of the year from Nick Miller. He's made a bunch of enemies, uh, but he also eliminated some tough competitions. So we'll just see how it plays out. Might have eliminated himself. You yeah, never know. Uh, yeah. Matt Kenseth Martinsville vibes. But uh, at 190 <laughs> miles an hour instead, so we'll see how it ends up. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Well, looking forward to it, fellas. We're going to end the season strong. been a great inaugural season, and uh, we're going to kick it off, or fin end, it, end it with a bang. I'm sure. I'd like to know what Mr. McElroy's thoughts are on everything. Uh, he's the league owner. We won't uh, get him on record. <laughs> we'll, we'll end the stream, so. I, I recommend you talk to him. I would say, man, I love a good storyline, and boy, do we have a good storyline. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely we, we uh, have we have all the content we need the media week's gonna be you know it, it is what's it's we already got everything we need don't even have, it's championship oh, yeah. race we got some storylines that's all we needed just a few yeah just a few it, it should be good man uh great way to start next week's broadcast too is just mm -hmm. over recap uh -huh. <laughs> we have going into uh, vegas uh yeah i heard a bunch of people asking it is indeed a night race at uh, vegas Championship under night, the under the night. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if somebody that has more abilities and talent than me get like a season recap video or something, highlight video, storyline video, anyone out there? I'd be, I'd be oh, you're going to put me to work this week. Yes, I am. <laughs> 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 it's not needed, but it would make logical sense. Um, uh, yeah, I'll put uh, the greatest ever video collector, Josh McClurgy. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation week. No, oh, no. All right, you better get to work right now then. Time. Yeah, it's... somebody hit up Richard. He'll do it. Mm. <laughs> no, he won't. Fair enough. All right, fellas. Well, we're gonna have a great end of the season one next week. We're looking forward to it. We'll see everybody there. I get no interview. Zach gets one. I don't give. Wow, I see how it is. All right. Well, they, right. They, they know you're frustrated. McCookin, you you get an off the record interview, okay? Okay. That's that's. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be the best interview of the year. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, fellas. We'll catch you later. <laughs> have a good see one. you guys. Yeah. All right, Art, your final thoughts on the race here this evening. I can't wait for next week. Like, <laughs> like, it, it's set up so well for next week, honestly. Everything we need is right there. It really yeah. is. Um, 
And that's not what I wanted. Race info. We want the final race results here tonight. Thomas Green going to his third win of the season, tying Rujua. You got to think they might be the championship favorites, uh, just due to the fact that they end up with the most wins. But obviously, Drew Juwa, he's turned the corner here. Second half of the season, and Justin Johnson, the impressive consistency uh, all season long. Uh, 12 cars ended up on the lead lap. Joshua McQuiggan, first car, one lap down. As Magnus Anderson right behind him. Bowers, Fillers, Arms, all trapped a lap down. So, uh, those are some of the storylines there. But uh, I'll go further down the list here. Get the rest of your race results here. Round of eight cutoff. And all the way down to Jacob Blakely. Only did nine laps. Um, still have no clue what happened to him. He was involved in the first two cautions of the night. Uh, the third caution, um, he was involved in the car blinked and came back destroyed. So we literally have no footage of it. Um, and then Ross Phillips did not take the green flag tonight. Neither did Davion Haskins or Mitchell Bagley. That was our 27 car field here this evening. But uh, the YJ Media Group, uh, minus me, will be back in action tomorrow night uh, for the LSRL, second race of the season, and then this Friday for the Rod Car doubleheader uh, to determine the championship four for next Friday, and then next Monday night, championship night for the Affinity Racing Series. Be sure to tune in for that. You'll have a great night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all take care, stay safe, and see everybody tomorrow. Bye.